Welcome back. A few weeks ago, Adobe released Denoise in Lightroom Classic, and this has been a game changer for Lightroom users. But I've been using Topaz Denoise now for nearly a year. And today we're going to see the differences between using Adobe Denoise in Lightroom and Topaz Denoise in the Topaz Denoise plugin. Now, even though Denoise has been available in Lightroom now for a few weeks, I decided to wait a bit because I really wanted to test out Lightroom Denoise compared to Topaz Denoise. I've been using Topaz Denoise in my wildlife images and in my astro images when I photographed the Milky Way. Today, we're going to compare four images. The first was taken at ISO 800, the second taken at ISO 4000, the third, the Milky Way photo, was taken at ISO 6400, and the fourth was taken at ISO 10,000. This is about the maximum that I shoot wildlife in. Let's jump into Lightroom, and we're going to compare how Topaz Denoise and how Adobe Denoise works in Lightroom Classic. Now I'm just in the library model to show you the photos here. The only photo we're going to edit in this tutorial is the first photo of a fig bird. The others I've already edited just to save time, but they were all done exactly the same way as you're going to see the first photo. Now this is the develop model in Adobe Lightroom, and you can see that this photo has been edited. This is how I use Topaz Denoise. I know some tutorials state that you should use Topaz Denoise right at the start, but I found for my workflow that I use Topaz Denoise right at the end. And I might use some contrast and some dehaze, which can induce noise in my wildlife photos. I found that if I use Topaz Denoise at the start, I had to reuse it again at the end. So I prefer to use now Topaz Denoise at the end when I finished all my editing and the image is just about ready to be saved. You can see it's all been edited. So we'll use Topaz Denoise first on the image. Right, we right click, we go into Edit In, Topaz Denoise, and I always choose Adobe RGB and 8-bit, and I'll click Edit. Now if we go over across on the right panel here, you can see AI Model is turned on, and Model Preferences is turned on. That means in Topaz Denoise, if both of these switches are turned on, you're letting Topaz Denoise choose which AI model to use and how much noise to remove and how much sharpness to enhance. This is how I do it, but I'm also doing it this way because you will see when we get into Lightroom Denoise, you don't have any ability to choose which profile you want, how much sharpening you want. So this is why I'm doing it this way. And you can see if I move the slider around, it has done a very good job. We click apply, there, the image is back in. Now we're going to click on the DNG file again and use Lightroom Denoise. So here's the, the original DNG. Before we use Denoise in Lightroom, I want to point out that I haven't added any extra sharpening or any noise reduction. The reason I've done this is that Topaz Denoise states that you shouldn't use sharpening in Lightroom before you use Denoise or AI Sharpen. So that's the reason I do it, like I stated earlier, to keep it a level playing field. So let's go ahead and use Denoise. Now we're on the eye of the bird, and we can see here Denoise is turned on and it's set to 100%. I found at 50% on most images, there is still noise there. So I don't use 50% and between 50% and 100%, there's not that much difference. You've got to get very close to about 80%. But most images, once they get over about ISO 2500 or ISO 3200, I need it at 100%. Even this image here shot at ISO 800 needs the noise reduction set to 100% and all my other images were also set to 100%. We click Enhance. Now this is a difference that I found between Topaz Denoise and Lightroom Denoise in that Topaz Denoise only takes about 10 seconds to save the image back into Lightroom. But Lightroom Denoise takes around 15 to 20 seconds, sometimes 25 seconds to do this. The difference is that 
In Topaz Denoise, its saving has an 8-bit TIFF, but in Lightroom, the Denoise saves it has a DNG file. All the editing that you've done in that DNG file is still there once you've denoised the image. But in Topaz, because it's a TIFF file, the editing has been locked in the TIFF file. So if you want to re-edit the image or add, you have to use the TIFF. Or if you don't like it, you've got to delete the TIFF file, go back, do your editing. But like I stated, I don't use Topaz Denoise until I'm satisfied with the image. So this doesn't happen to me. Now, I've saved these images, but I've saved them as a square, really cropped in, in this one, the bird's head, to show the differences. So you can clearly see the differences between the original DNG file, the Topaz TIFF file, and the Lightroom DNG file that has had Denoise applied to it. This is the original DNG file, you can see that there's quite a bit of noise here. Now, before I go any further, if you want to see these images, there's a link in the description to my Facebook page, and there's an album there with all of these sample photos. So this is the DNG file. This is the Topaz Denoise file. And this is the Lightroom Denoise file. This is a 32 inch screen. And on the screen here, I can see that the Topaz Denoise file is just slightly sharper. The amount of blur in the background, Lightroom Denoise takes for that. It's removed more of the, the background. But the sharpness in the eye, Topaz Denoise wins that. Now this is the second image. This image taken at ISO 4000. You can see there's quite a bit of grain to it. Topaz Denoise does a very good job. Lightroom Denoise also does a good job. The only big difference here that I see is that Topaz Denoise, the image is slightly sharper, but there is slightly more noise in the background. But I'm splitting hairs here. If you would upload this to Facebook, nobody would see the difference. I'm just explaining what I'm seeing on my 32 inch screen here because I want to be fair and impartial, even though I like using Topaz Denoise a lot. When you review software like this, you have to be impartial. You can't favor one side or the other. Now this is the Milky Way photo taken at night, ISO 6400. There's a lot of noise in there. This is the Topaz Denoise. It's done a very good job, but if you look at the top of the chapel here, on the right, the noise has just about gone, but on the left here, there's quite a bit of noise still left. But the stars are clean. If we go over to the Lightroom Denoise, we can see that everything's clean, but the image is slightly softer. For all intended purposes, I'm sure if you post an image like this on Facebook, people will go, wow, it looks so nice. There is no noise in the image. Because it's still in DNG file, I could go back in Adobe Lightroom, use a mask, select a chapel, and just add a little bit of sharpness to the image. Now, the last image here of this specific black duck was taken at ISO 10,000. And you might think, wow, I would never shoot at ISO 10,000. But high ISO is not a killer in photography. It is your exposure. This image was exposed correctly. It was late in the afternoon. The duck was in the shade underneath a tree and the image was taken at one, two and a half thousandths of a second. It was a very fast shutter speed, but there were four ducks here. Three of them had already flown off. So that's why I had chosen two and a half thousandths of a second for the shutter speed, because I was hoping that this duck also would take off and I would get a couple of photos of it as it flew off, but it didn't fly off. You can see there's quite a lot of noise at ISO 10,000, but still very manageable. And understand that I've already done quite a bit of editing. Now this is the Topaz Denoise image. It looks very nice. Still just a minor amount of noise in the background, but very acceptable for ISO 10,000. This is the Lightroom Denoise. Beautiful. All the noise is gone and the duck is relatively sharp. Now between Topaz Denoise and Lightroom Denoise in this image here, too hard to split. It is so hard to see the difference, even with such a tight crop. Now let me show you something. These are the three crops side by side. And it's only when I did this that I saw something very peculiar. On the left is our original DNG file. The center image is Topaz. And the third image is the Denoise image in Lightroom. And what I found with the images is that the Lightroom Denoise file, the colors were slightly desaturated. Now I ran this test over and over again on various images 
and it all came out the same. The colors were just slightly desaturated and I had to increase the vibrancy of these colors just to match up to the original. The same here, if we look at the second photo taken at ISO 4000, the green on the left here is very nice. Topaz Denoise is also good, but Lightroom Denoise, it is much flatter. I would have to add more vibrance to it. The same with the Milky Way photos, but not as much. The two, the original DNG and the Denoise, the colors are exactly the same, but Lightroom Denoise is less saturated. Here I found something very peculiar in this last image here. Like the others, the Lightroom Denoise, the colors are less saturated. But if you go to these photos on my Facebook page and you look at these photos carefully, look at the eye of this duck. The eye in the Denoise in Lightroom pops. It looks natural. Where the other two, there's a bit of reflections. And that's the only difference in these photos. This is the only one that's done that. And peculiarity, I don't know. But when I looked and you're like, oh, what happened to the eye? Well, the eye pops compared to the original one. Here is something that you have to be mindful of if you're using Topaz Denoise already and you want to try out Lightroom Denoise. If you crop an image in Lightroom and then take it to Topaz Denoise, the image will stay cropped. But if you do this in Lightroom and use the Denoise feature, although it looks like that you've cropped the image, when the image comes back from Topaz Denoise, remember it's still a DNG file, it hasn't cropped it. It shows that it's cropped, but you can still see the full image. Now this might matter to you, but for me it does because a lot of my wildlife images are cropped and it means I'm saving this space. Now to give you a difference in file sizes, the original DNG file was 29 megabytes. The TIFF file that Topaz Denoise created was only 18 megabytes, but the DNG file that Lightroom created in Denoise was 86 megabytes. So you can see there's quite a bit of difference. And if you add that up in the thousands of photos that I shoot, it does add up to quite a bit of disk space. Is that something that I would be very concerned about? Only if the final result was just about identical. I mean, only 10% difference. Then I would choose the Topaz Denoise file because I'd say like, well, I'm saving 70 megabytes and the files are so similar that it doesn't concern me. So I hope you can see that to me, there's not much difference between Topaz Denoise and Lightroom Denoise. Will I now use just Lightroom Denoise? Well, on some of my images, but I will still be using Topaz Denoise because the advantage for me in using Topaz Denoise, one, it's a TIFF file, the file size is slightly lower, and also I can adjust the setting. So if I'm not happy with what Topaz Denoise gives me, I can just select another one. For example, this one here, it just chose. But if I looked at there was too much noise, I could just click the setting of severe noise and see what that setting comes in. And if I saw that it added too much sharpening to the image, I could just reduce the sharpening. This is the big difference between Topaz Denoise and Lightroom Denoise. Now this is the first version of Lightroom Denoise. Who knows what's going to come into the future, into future updates of Denoise. Maybe in the future Adobe will add a few extra features in the Denoise. For example, that you can select how much sharpening you want or select different models, not just leave it on auto. But that's a future, we don't know what Adobe is going to do. So if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up, stay safe, enjoy editing your photos, and by all means, test out the differences between Adobe Lightroom Denoise and Topaz Denoise. Stay safe, I will see you next time.